Welcome to my fifth annual Boycott Black Friday video. Uh, I just recently became hip to the term Plaid Friday, which I'm, so I'm going to change the name of the series to something positive instead of negative. So instead of boycotting Black Friday, we'll call it Supporting Plaid Friday. So welcome to my first annual Support Plaid Friday video. The concept being that as we approach this time of year, everything gets a little nutty and consumer frenzy. And I think maybe I speak for myself, but I think sometimes we get wrapped up in the frenzy of it too. And I like to just do this little video where you're like, whoa, slow down. You know, you can always just make something special for someone instead of buying something that's just like the crap du jour. Uh, so in, in years past, I've done really complicated uh, builds, um, like a uh, ukulele, but then I did some really simple builds, including one with just hand tools. I made some building blocks, and I also made some building blocks on the CNC, and I shared the files so other people could make these blocks themselves and expand upon them. Uh, this year, I thought I would do uh, a chess set. And uh, this is all made of reclaimed wood. So the idea behind this chess set is, besides the fact that it's reclaimed, is um, I wanted to make it simple. Uh, I was inspired by the Bauhaus era uh, chess sets and uh, the sort of minimalist design. So I took the, the basic shapes and functions of the pieces and I stripped them down to their bare essence to just show what needs to be seen. So they're very quickly identifiable as the piece they are. And they are a, sort of a simple elegance was the idea. Uh, so this video is going to show you how I made those, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. The other side of the video, because then I'll say goodbye then. All right, well, here it is. When I make chessboards, I like to kind of have themes, and so the theme of this chessboard was it's all reclaimed wood from the outdoors, like from decking and whatnot. So this here I'm ripping apart is some Brazilian Kumaru that's uh, some decking that I was able to get a whole bunch of, and it's... Not, uh, I mean, it's pretty nice wood, but it's really hard to work with. It's dulger blades. It's pretty uh, unforgiving, which is why I make such a good deck. Um, here you'll just see I'm pointing out that there's no point in getting rid of those screws. They're still perfectly good. And then, of course, I save all my nails. It's my retirement fund. <laughs> Someday I'll have enough to scrap them all in and buy a cup of coffee in scrap metal value. So uh, this particular decking had uh, some kind of, you know, contractor's glue on the bottom, which comes off pretty easy. Not a lot of nails, but, you know, it's a pain in the neck. So then the other woods that I used are cedar, reclaimed from uh, fences, and so that's what the board is made out of, is the Kumaru and this reclaimed cedar fence. But this video isn't really about the board, it's just about the pieces. So I had made the board out of the Kumaru and the fence, now I'm making the pieces. I have the Kumaru, and I didn't want to use the cedar for the other wood because I thought it'd be too soft and you'll get to see in a minute what I use. I had to, in order to get my inch and a half thickness diameter, I had to laminate two pieces of this wood together and so I, I clamped it up using quite a few clamps to avoid any gaps since I was going to be cutting these into smaller pieces. I want them to be as, as good as possible. I made sure I used every clamp that I had. Two thousand years later. The next morning I pulled the clamps off and, uh, you know, a few passes on the jointer and through the planer to just square it all up. I had cut it just a little bit big. Uh, it was about an inch and three quarters start, so that way I could bring it down to like a perfect inch and a half square. Now the other wood I'm using here, this is some reclaimed teak that I had gotten a few years ago. It was some decking furniture that had gotten thrown away and it was all gray and gnarly. And after a couple passes through the planer, it was beautiful. So you could see that's what it looked like, and some of the posts here that I'm cutting are sort of uh, three boards laminated together, so I didn't have to do any work for those. I just cut those into the inch and a half square as well. Now, both sides, the Teak and the Kumaru, are all squared up in their inch and a half diameter. It's time to cut the pieces. The system I used was based on height and just very simple designs and to show the pieces apart. So I started at four and a half inches tall for the kings, down to four inches for the queens, three and a half for the bishops, three for the uh, for the knights, two and a half for the rooks, and two inches for all the pawns. So that's what's going on here. And I apologize, I had the camera I was using was on the sled, and usually that works pretty good, but for some reason this camera got real shaky looking. Uh, so that's all I'm doing here. It's just a matter of cutting all my pieces to size. You end up needing about four feet of this stock for each side. Okay. 
If you don't have a table saw sled, I highly recommend making one. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about it. Mine is nothing fancy. It's just a board with a couple runners and a back and a front. But I have um, measurements marked on there for just making quick cuts. Uh, so I don't even have to use the stop. And and then uh, it's like this whole video is like a commercial for the square. But I really do use the square this often. Um, it's just a very simple and easy to see way to set up these types of things. So here I'm making the kings and queens. And the queen has one stripe and the king has two. I just measured, I think it was like a half inch from the top and then I did another half inch uh, for the second stripe and I just set the blade at like about an eighth of inch deep, I think it was a little less even, and just carved those lines in there for the kings and queens. Now I'm bringing the blade up a little bit to cut the rooks and what I did here is I, I put a backing board and I found the center of the, the board which is three quarters and then I took went an eighth inch on either side so with two passes of the blade by flipping it one side and then the other. You can see here I go one side and then I flip it and do the other. The kerf of the blade twice is what makes the depth or the uh, the width of the slots. So there it is. There's nothing to clean. It's just four cuts and the entire rook is done. This is another simple little just uh, mitering sled that I have. It's set to 45 degrees and I just slice 45 degrees off the top of the bishop. I didn't quite go all the way I left a little bit of flat up top just so it wouldn't be like pointy. Now back to my other sled. And the more complicated one is the knights. Using my stop and a backer board to help prevent tear out, I just divided the thirds of the block and then I went through and just very simply cleaned them all up. And Know your comfort level with the table saw. I'm obviously moving much slower and this film is sped up there. It looks a little scary, but it's not. And then I want to give it a little bit of shape though. So uh, when Jimmy Dressa gave me this old table saw, he gave me one of his sleds that he had with it too. that has a 45 degree already in it. So that way I was able to keep my sled nice. And I pull out his whenever I need to cut a miter with a sled. And again, I apologize for the shaky camera, but so I just went and took and nicked off one edge of those dados to give it a 45. And now I have a nice shape. Again, we'll talk about comfort level and safety with tools. Uh, this is a very shallow pass I'm doing on a router table, but you can see my hands are very close to this router blade. You need to know exactly where to hold this against the spinning blade to get it to not like come back at you and stuff. There's a precise location of the rotation that is the safest place to do this. Uh, you don't have to do this. You could do this with a hand plane. You could even just leave them square. I just wanted to give the edges a little round over. Know your comfort level. Know your tools. And since it was reclaimed, I had a little bit of some ugly spots and some chip outs. And I ended up doing more sanding than I wanted to. But I think that a lot of us could say that about every project. Um, I wanted to just sort of clean them up the best I could. Now here's where I really screwed up. And I will save you some trouble. <laughs> uh, the idea was to use this walnut tinted Danish oil on the dark side and then on the teak I wanted to use some uh, like a pickling white that I had, a, a water based white stain. And uh, I thought that would give it like a wood grain but just lighten it a little bit because there wasn't enough contrast between the two woods natural but you can see it just looks horrible. It, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with it. So I ended up sanding it all out and spray painting the teak white. I know it's like a real sin to like spray paint teak but you know what? I pulled it out of a dumpster. I can do whatever I want with it. I did put a little bit of a clear coat on the dark pieces, just a quick spray of some lacquer and then polished them up. This is the board. Like I said, I didn't talk about making the board in this video. I ended up doing a whole epoxy treatment over the whole thing to kind of harden it up, cleaned it all up, and, uh, and that's it. And that's really all there is to it. Once you have the wood milled down to the inch and a half sticks, uh, you could really make this test set in like an hour. It took me a little bit longer because due to the nature of reclaimed wood, I had some issues of you know chipping some stuff apart. And, and then I had the whole finished debacle that I had to deal with. But it's a, it's a pretty easy project uh, and you can do it very quickly. There's plenty of videos on the internet about making boards. I didn't want to include that in this video because I didn't want it to be too long. You can find them on my channel as well as other people's channels. It's not as complicated as it seems and you can even just get a sharpie and draw a bunch of squares. <laughs> There's lots of different ways to make chess boards. That could become another project as well. I hope this inspires you to, to just keep going with making gifts and, and stay out of the stores or at the very least to support other people like you and me who make things. 
Uh, I can't make everything, but I can buy things from people like me that make things I can't make. You know, uh, that's sort of the idea of support Plaid Friday, not boycott Black Friday. I don't want to do the negative stuff. And I hope that this video is a valuable contribution to the world of making and not consuming too much. <laughs> do something special, not just expensive. All right. Thank you very much for watching. You can like, share, and subscribe, and all that stuff is very, very helpful. It is also super helpful if you support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tim Sway. And I'll see you around the interweb. I have a lot of really exciting videos coming up in December, like videos that I'm like super stoked to share. So I hope you stick around. Be good.